Yes, my people, good day. We are working on a Porsche Cayenne today. Turbo. Something nice. Let's take a look. We're going to just change the oil. So let me show you how to change the oil on one of these. Not sure if you have had before. Step one. That is where the release is. Check it out. Bam. One of these machines. This is where the hood release is. Under here. And look at that. Why oi? Look at that. Yeah. Cayenne. Poor stings. Open the oil fill cap here. Set it right there. These things don't have dipstick. So don't look for the dipstick. You're going to check it from the dash. So now we're going to pick this thing up. Let's go. All right, under here, <laughs> there is nothing to see. Everything is just plastic. <laughs> you see that? Plastic, plastic everywhere. Everything. With the engine compartment anyway. So that's the ball joint. This is a lower control arm. This is a control arm bushing here. There's a control arm bushing here. And I'm looking at it and... Um, uh, it's a little bit torn in there, but nothing too crazy. I don't see any movements here neither, so that's good. We're just looking it over. This is a tie rod end, outer tie rod end, looking at the boot. This is the inner tie rod end. This is the rack and pinion boot. That is through there. That controls steering. This is the brake caliper. They call this the lobster claw. It's a really powerful brakes here. With much speed and weight, you need to be able to stop. It's a CV axle. This thing is all-wheel drive. So it has axles on the front and axles on the back. All right, looks like somebody. And don't forget to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ran over something there, nothing too crazy. So we're going to remove this panel in from here so we can get to drain the fluids and see some more. Same thing over here. I'm just pre doing some preliminary checks, looks, looking at the control arm, looking at the control arm bushing. You see right here, you see how it's kind of shiny in this spot right here this is moving in and out so that's that's saying to me that possibly this bushing here is a little bit soft a little bit weak should be moving back and forth like that because it has a shiny spot there and i don't have any shiny spots on this side so if if this was by design both of them this one and that one would be doing the same thing so something going on right there i think the control arm bushing a little bit weak out a tire then on this side in a tire end the boot looks good cv boot looks good there as well all right we will take a closer look at those components here in a few looking up there at the suspension components everything looks decent let's take a look in the back all right so boom so all right so this this is a transfer case to make it four-wheel drive so the transfer case connected to the back of the transmission transmission mount or transfer case mount here see this cross member supporting everybody we have the exhaust going back fuel tank so saddlebag fuel tanks so look how elaborate this fuel tank is we're starting all the way here we're coming all the way back to here then we go up and over the exhaust come down on the other side and then we are here so you notice that this one stops here while this one comes to there. So they're utilizing as much space under here as possible to give them the best fuel mileage. What's going on? This look kind of suspect, you know, I don't like that because fuel is stainy. Fuel stains, this is not just water. So mm, definitely I've got to check what's going on there. I don't know if they overfill something, but something don't look right. It could be nothing, but something don't look right right there. Could be overfill and it flows over or it could be that the fuel tank sending unit gasket is leaking and when you fill the tank up it's leaking and spilling out the top could be not sure but being that this looks this way and this looks this way and that look that way 
chances of it doing it on both sides is kind of slim to none maybe something just weird about this bracket here i don't know just look different something all right all right let me see what's going on here so all right so this is the rear suspension so it have a pneumatic suspension earbags they use earbags on here pretty good quality ones actually you don't really change them too often but this is what it is see we have um looking at the tires sometimes some of these sports tires look good on the outer bead but on the inner bead they're all smooth this one here is a little bit more worn worn than the outside but it's still good see the size of these tires man what size we're running here 295 35 21s <laughs> that's not a hundred dollar tire that's for sure all right everything look decent on there this is a rear differential and then it's mounts it's not like them bmw mounts these are more beefy and they have one right here as well <laughs> they don't want that that differential going anywhere when the horsepower reach it but let us get back to what we're working on here we're going to do the oil change and so we're going on look at this tire see this tire here see that feather in there you're getting ready to lose that tire you know you understand you see see that feather in right there so you're getting ready to lose that tire it still have some life left in it still but they're on the way out they're really on the way out they look good on the outside but it's wearing out for this type of vehicle for the kind of performance that it has and the weight that it has you can't really take too many chances with that so we are now going to remove this panel here so we can get to drain the fluid it looks like these look like possibly 10 millimeter maybe possibly so we're about to do that. Let's go. You need a long extension. There's one all the way up there in the top. One on each side. That's it. Come down. So this is what it looks like under here now. Okay. Now that's a funky looking color for an oil pan. I've never seen it looking like that before. That's probably some special type of aluminum. This is the front differential. Goes out with the CV axle I showed you. That's the CV act. No, not, not this. That's the tie rod end, rack boot. That's for steering. But in here, that's the CV axle, which goes out to the wheel out here. So that's how you get that drive. All right. We have coolant lines going back there. There's a catalytic converter. People cutting these things off left, right, and center. See the size of the downpipe, man, on one side of the engine. That looks like three, three, three inch, uh, three and a half, maybe. That's big boy stuff right there. All right, so this is the oil pan. This is the drain plug. Check it out. Oil filter housing. Oil filter housing cap. You need a big socket for that. See the size of this oil cooler? Huh? See the size of that? bad boy right there AC compressor that's the belt this engine on here looks pretty clean All right this is the rack and pinion we get a real good view of it here um, still fluid type so it's not electric so that's pretty cool so far all right so let me show you the oil filter so this is the oil filter that we're using See, it's a cartridge style filter so that's why it looks so funny something I noticed I don't know if you can see it the plug for the transfer case actuator motor see if you can see it from this end and see how oily that is and this telling me that there's fluid 
coming through the actuator into the harness and the dangerous thing is this oil can wick and travel all the way up the harness and get to the ECM happens with Mercedes and destroys the ECM it's crazy so I'm gonna pull this plug off and see if it's wet on the inside and if it is wet on the inside we have to replace this thing I will tell them recommend it and then them decide what they want to do sub free mount just look at it while you're under here make sure it's, it's not shifting or moving you'll see any rusty water or anything everything look decent still this is a sway bar see the size of the sway bar then you have the sway bar end link you have the sway bar bushings right there one there and one here so let's get to the oil change This right here fit on top of it like so. And I saw this pull. Yeah, you pull them off like so. Uh-huh. So you change the arm pan. This is why I mean I like the um gear wrench. The gear wrench one down. The gear wrench one it will bust your knuckle. Get rid of that by the Milwaukee one. All right, right into the drink. Now this ready. And here it's a 25 25 newton meters so we're gonna go to 25 newton meters newton meters here that's 23.7 plus 0.7 that'll be 24 23.7 24.7 that's right around there 25 you know exact boom let's go kind of weird
and that's it does want you to tighten it no more than that 25 newton meters don't forget to put this on no new crush washer come with it It takes more time replacing, reinstalling all these under panels than it takes to drain and fill the oil. I'm telling you, all these different fasteners, it's got two panels. You know, I can't complain too much because some manufacturers use aluminum skid plates, so they're heavier, you know, Toyota Tundra. But the thing is, it, it's pretty big because it's a tundra, but it's not two pieces. It's just one big piece and it's just bulky. And uh, man, let me tell you, I like the skid plate idea and everything. But boy, when it's time to change that oil, you know, it's work. This whole video is, is edited and sped up in certain portions. And it's still almost 20 minutes. And this is an oil change that we're doing. So you can't be paying the technicians 0 0.2 0 0.3 4 no. this is like an hour and a half oil change let me tell you it's just different <laughs> so at this point here i see where someone missed a fastener so i had to find a fastener and put in there because that side was hanging and sagging you know i can't blame him you know they're tired and they lose count there's just so many different fasteners on there <laughs> but it's just what it is man porsche lifestyle <laughs> well we're almost done we're on the home straight now i have extension i have um stubbies i have light i have impact i have ratchet man <laughs> and this is just an oil change time to fill it back up this is my oil of choice mo tool i am certain that there will be someone in the comments who disagree with the choice but take a look see what it say porsche right it's actually on the side of the bottle so just in case i made sure i zoomed in on that for those dissenters <laughs> so that was like five quarts five liters it doesn't take quite two full bottles ten it takes probably i think it's like eight maybe so that's why you see me not pouring the entire amount in there. I'm just gauging it. And then after, I'll check it from the dash. If it's low, I'll top it back off. Is this right here, the thumb wheel. It in so you got vehicle in your press and then you scroll down this is scrolling down and then you got eye level in your press oil of information on oil of is currently not available what i did at this point is i started up the vehicle let it run for maybe like five minutes or so cut it back off and then i tried again to read it I'm getting a reading now and it's showing that it's a little bit low so I went and I topped it off a little bit and then rechecked and it was good to go thanks for watching have a nice day bless you yeah. and don't forget to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel